Hi folks, so I wanted to talk today about the mutes I use when playing early jazz and blues music. If you're just getting started playing this music, you may be eager to build your mute arsenal. And I wanted to talk you through some of the mutes that are out there and which may appear most useful on the bandstand. I think a great place to start is with these metal con mutes. They seem to have been something of a staple during the 1920s and are associated today with great musicians such as King Oliver. They can be used as regular straight mutes, but also employed to great effect using a half-hand technique, your remaining fingers creating a wah-wah effect. Although these mutes used to come free with con instruments, they can be a little hard to find these days, and a modern-day pixie mute can serve as a good substitute until you can find a vintage piece for a good price. The con metal mute can be used in conjunction with the plunger. This is a popular way to mimic that iconic Bubba Miley sound you hear on those early Ellington records, or even that terrific sound that Muggsy Spanier achieves a little later on. Now I would advise against spending any real money on a plunger. Just go to your local hardware store and pick one up for a few bucks. Next up, it's a great idea to have a Harmon or Wow Wow Mute in your collection. If you're wanting to play in a group that uses written arrangements, you'll most likely find that this is going to be useful. Many 20s arrangements do have arranged Wah Wah parts, but these are also used for sweet passages. <laughs> So next up we have the hat or derby mute. Now this mute honestly is not super vital on most gigs, but if you are wanting to play original 1920s and 30s arrangements, you will find that this mute pops up over and over again. Honestly I think if a band leader expects this mute to be used, they should probably provide it themselves. But I will say that having one in your collection can be a lot of fun. There's lots of great effects you can get with one. Obviously this aluminum style is the iconic look, but they can be expensive and hard to find. So until you can find a good price on one, a modern day equivalent will work just fine, or even a vintage bowler hat. The cup mute doesn't seem to appear in very early jazz, but certainly by the 1930s styles, you're going to want to have one of these. I personally love these Shastok cup mutes with the adjustable cup. You can get a whole bunch of different tones out of it. And honestly, on some gigs, I will just bring this mute and use it as a Swiss Army mute. I can have a plunger effect and a straight mute as well as the cup mute. But once again, these vintage models can be hard to find for a good price, so keep looking and in the meantime, a modern day cup mute will serve just fine. It's a great idea to have a straight mute in your collection, even if you have a con metal mute. These wooden and fibre mutes do offer a different tone and if you can find a vintage piece uh, made of especially thin materials, you won't be disappointed with the effect. And finally, we have the solo tone mute. Now this serves a very similar function to the Harmon mute with its wow-wow capabilities, but being made of different materials, it does offer a different tone, and some charts do call for them. I use this Shastok brand solo tone because I think they sound terrific. I really recommend looking out for one, but once again, they can be very expensive and you might be looking for a long time to find a good price. So in the meantime, once again, a modern day equivalent will work just fine. Before I wrap up, let's look at a couple of honourable mentions. 
So first we have the megaphone. This was used in 1920s dance bands to create a particularly unique and dreamy effect, especially when used with a trombone. <laughs> I don't have an original bandstand megaphone, but I've rigged up this cheerleader's megaphone and it seems to do the trick. Then there is the kazoo mute, used in the early 20s as a novelty effect. This is literally just a kazoo inserted in the end of a regular mute, so I, I rigged myself one up just for fun. <laughs> Finally, it is worth investing in a good mute holder, especially if you're going to be playing arrangements that may require speedy mute changes. I love this vintage one as it folds away and fits very easily in my trumpet case. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you have done, please do like and subscribe.